So the first thing you want to do is, of course, make it Unity Terrain. And right after you do that, you want to change the width and length of it because by default it's two square kilometers. So my width and length, I keep a power of two. And the reason I do that is when I put my height ramp resolution to a power of two plus one, you get a nice even ratio of uh, detail. So uh, my terrain height can be anything. I just chose 50. Detail resolution isn't going to be used by Polyworld, so you can keep that low. Um, and your control, control texture resolution will keep that the same as your terrain width and length, just to keep a you know, even amount of detail, because you're going to be rendering all the textures to vertex color. So if you want it to be accurate, make sure your width, length, and control texture resolution are one-to-one, -one so you get perfect consistency. We're just going to sculpt some detail. doesn't really matter what we're doing here. I just want to show you. And what's cool is, if you have a special script or a plugin like Terrain Toolkit that operates on Unity Terrains, Polyworld will work with it. And if for some reason it doesn't, just shoot me an email and I'll see what I can do. Alright, now we're just going to add some textures. Do like a grass. And for the texture size here, I actually like to keep it big. And the reason being is because when we go and we render all this down to vertex color, all these interesting you know, value ranges here in your textures are actually going to be considered and baked down in the vertices. Whereas if you keep it you know, nice and tight, like we usually would do, like, um, like that, you're not going to get a lot of variation, especially in the distance. So for Polyworld, you actually want to keep it kind of big. And we'll go ahead and add like a, a dirt. And for this one, we'll do the same size. We'll add a rock. This one we'll do a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to paint wherever. Again, we're just demonstrating here. It doesn't need to be pretty. I just want to show you what it can do. So we'll paint a little bit of a huge path there. And we will shrink this down. And we'll just paint some of these hillsides with a little bit of rock. We'll sculpt this a little bit more. Gonna add some noise to the surface just a little bit to give it some bump. Just kind of scribble on the surface. It may not be noticeable here, but you'll definitely notice it when you render the terrain to a polyworld terrain. And let's do some more dirt. This time we'll keep it small. We'll just follow the curves terrain here just for fun. Sprinkle some rock around. Okay. Best terrain ever. Okay. So when you're ready, go to Window, Quantum Theory, Polyworld Terrain, and you get this nice little box here. Now for initially if you don't have a terrain selected, it's gonna say, hey, select a Unity terrain to get started. So there you go. Now the mesh type, you have triangles and quads, and this just has to do with how the edges are turned. It's just a purely aesthetic thing. It's really not a huge deal. Um, experiment, see which one you like best. Resolution uh, is very important. This has all to do with the amount of vertices that are going to result in the polyworld terrain relative to the original terrain. So if we go and go uh, wireframe. So at the highest density for the Unity terrain, the full resolution is going to take this, and it, that's going to be the Polyworld terrain that results. It's going to be that dense all the way around. If you go half, it's going to be half this size. So maybe if we back out a little bit, 
it's going to be the quads are going to be this big up close. So if you're trying to make something that's super high detail, you might want to go full. But if you want something that's out in the distance, like if you're making uh, distant mountains out of Unity terrains, converting to Polyworld, you might want to go a quarter or eighth, or even smaller than that. Again, this is all going to depend on how big the terrain is. If it's 200 meters by 200 meters, you know you can you can go full or half. That's no problem. But if you do something that's massive and it's just one piece, you might want to go a little lower. Uh, but that's it's malleable. You can choose whatever settings you want. So for this, I'm going to go with full, and I'll hit generate. And this is going to tell you, hey, don't just use the default terrain name. Uh, name it something unique, and it's going to make just asset management easier for you. Because when you're making Polyworld scenes, uh, you're probably going to want to create a lot of terrains because it's just fun and they're meshes. So you can create all kinds of different things. You can rotate them into place. You can create mountainous uh, shapes from Unity terrains, convert it over. Um, so let's just change this to terrain main. That's good enough. And we hit generate. And it's going to give you a warning about how hey, you chose full resolution. It might take some time to generate it. It's going to be more expensive to render because you have a lot more geometry. Now it's dependent on your target platform, if it's desktop or mobile. Uh, and it's going to take longer to light map if you choose to do so. So only choose full resolution if you really know that's what you want. So we're going to say yes. Now we just pick where we want it to be. And I'll be keeping this in the scenes folder. So it's going to generate. And now we have just a big old mesh. And to edit that, you do all your editing by selecting the terrain main, the unity terrain, and when you want to edit it, you want to use the associated mesh. So now it's going to know that whatever changes you apply to the old terrain is going to be targeted towards the new one. So then, if we have a gray terrain, apply the custom shaders to it. It's probably going to turn black because it's showing off the vertex colors and any image-based lighting that's applied. None of that stuff is set yet, because we haven't done it, until we do Bake Vertex Colors. Now, just hide the terrain, and there you go. Now, let's say you want to clean some of this up. You know, Maybe you want um, some more pathing around here. You want to put some more paths around the hills. And you notice that... Our terrain is actually pretty smooth. You know, we did big, broad, smooth strokes. And when we go to render the actual polyworld terrain, you're going to notice that some triangles, some vertex colors look faceted, while others don't. That's because of the smoothing angle. The smoothing angle is set to zero. So if there's zero degrees difference from face to face to face, it's automatically going to smooth those triangles out. So you're not going to get perfect faceting. The way to fix that is really simple. Just hide the associated mesh, go back to the Unity terrain, and just get in there with a little brush and sculpt some more detail. Make it a little bit bumpier. and just regenerate the terrain. Now, by default, it's going to delete the, the old terrain prefab and create a new one, so all the vertex color data is going to be deleted. You can skip the whole process by just saying auto-bake. It'll automatically bake for you. Hide the terrain, and there we go. Now we have nice, edgy bumpy terrain there. But if you like them blurry like that, you can just smooth the terrain out. And let's go back and add some details to our original terrain. Maybe just something really sharp. I have an idea. Let's sample this and just create 
something extraordinarily sharp like a cliff face. And we'll just texture that gray. Now this is going to look crazy in a normal Unity terrain based game because you know all the stretchiness, it's kind of hideous. But in Poly World, it's actually kind of cool. Um, I'm just going to blur that just a little bit. And we'll keep those vertical faces just to show you a contrast. Put some dirt at the base for some fun. There we go. Regenerate it. That's pretty cool. We'll select our sun and just rotate it. There you go. Those are the basics of a poly world terrain. And have fun experimenting. And one last really cool thing I forgot to mention is remember always select your main terrain to make changes to it. The script will tell you. You can actually add as many textures as Unity will allow uh, for um, terrain painting. The reason being is because we're not using this data at runtime. This terrain will not exist uh, in your build. It's not going to be used because all this data gets baked down to vertex colors. So I can go in and uh, let's, add the, let's add a just a rocky texture and then you can also just add little swatches like um, I've got the blue swatch. These are just flat colors. I could do orange. This is really handy if you just want to add some subtle color variety. We could do clay. So if I want maybe this clay right here to be a little more richer just bring the target strength down and just give it a little bit of a hue shift make it a little denser okay and maybe I'll take this grass right here and make it a little bit more brown and add a little bit of clay into these mountains here or the rock and then I will add this other dirt texture here. Leave it there, but then we'll make it richer right here. Get some stones. Now these stones, there's, the detail is a lot finer. You're not going to actually see those stones in the vertex colors, of course, but you'll get some cool color variation nonetheless. And finally, just regenerate. And there you go. You can see how the orange tinted the rock a little bit. We have some kind of brown on the tops of the hills here. Let's go back and make that a little bit more bumpy. Again, I'm just painting real subtlety. I'm actually painting and then intermittently pressing shift to paint like up and down and up and down. Regenerate it again. There we go. Now let's say this is maybe too much triangular detail. We can go right back and change the resolution and maintain all the coloring. So just change the resolution to half. Make sure use associated mesh is turned on so we're using the mesh and hit generate. Now we have a lot more coarse detail. You can see our triangles are bigger now. Let's go even higher. That's pretty cool. And this might be appropriate for your art direction. Maybe you just want some really big triangles and really kind of smooth terrain. So that is terrain painting in Polyworld. And 
for now, let's try it out. Let's just take the standard assets first person controller. Put them in the scene and hit play. And you can see that it works perfectly. The reason being is uh, we're actually using the original terrain's collision. So your collision is going to be nice and smooth on this. Physics objects are going to work perfectly. And so that's cool.